morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. I'm Jeremy Schulten. I'm the senior pastor here, and we want to welcome you to our virtual worship experience. We invite you to participate in this service as much as you feel led. So please join us as we head inside and begin our worship service. This place new light is streaming now is the darkness vanished away see in this place our fear and our dreaming brought here to you in the light of the day gather us in the lost and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give 
us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the soul. Please bow with me for prayer. Oh God, we do not ask you to come into this place because we know that you're already here. 
Instead, we ask that you would help us to be aware of your presence, that we would hear your voice in song, in scripture, in prayer, and in the times of silence. Help us to be aware of your presence, not just in this service, but as we worship with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to worship this morning. We are so glad that you have joined us. Today is a special day of thankfulness, gratitude, and celebration as we honor our high school graduates. It's also a day to celebrate all the amazing things that are happening in our church right now. Our missions team is for the next two weeks filling in the gap between the end of the school year and the beginning of summer classes. There's a gap where there's many children who are not going to have their weekly food or daily food uh, delivered to them. And so our missions team has come together. Ruth Denby is working with Family Promise and many other area churches to see that these children and families receive boxes filled with breakfast and lunch foods. They are asking for volunteers and donations. Um, they have also had many companies in the community um, come together, and the poultry companies uh, are providing over 2,000 pounds of fresh and frozen poultry, which is just amazing. And there's many others that have joined in. If you'd like to be a part of this mission team, you just need to contact Ruth Demby. We also have exciting news that we have a new Bible study that started last week. It's okay if you missed the first week. It's led by our very own Kent Murphy. You can join this Wednesday as they uh, research into Pontius Pilate, which I find would be very interesting. They are going to uncover the crisis, choices, and outcomes of Pontius Pilate. That's going to be on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. If you'd like to join the Zoom, you can contact Kent. They're also recording that, so if you can't be on there at 6 p.m., they can get you a recording of it. On Monday night, Kelly is also going to be doing a spiritual disciplines study um, that we will be introing on Wednesday night. It's going to be taught by many of our pastors and lay leaders, and um, Kelly's going to expand on it on Monday night. So if you're interested in learning more about that, contact Kelly. There are so many exciting things about our summer coming up. I think they told me I can't tell you all of them yet, but there's so many things for the family ministries and the children and the youth. So please uh, keep looking for your emails and on the website and Facebook, and you'll find all the th great, amazing things. Now is a very special time where we get to celebrate our high school graduates. There was once a man who was traveling from place to place, and as he was traveling, he saw this mansion with a candle lit in every window. He wondered in a rhetorical way, is it possible that this mansion is without someone to look after it? How could it be that it has no caretaker? And at that moment, the owner of the mansion peered out at him and said, I am the owner of this mansion. I am the master and creator of this house. Likewise, it is also so with our father Abraham. Abraham was wandering in the world, and one day he looked around and said, Is it possible that this world should be without someone to look after it? The Lord God peered down at him and said, I am the world's owner. I am the creator of this place. This story is from the ancient Jewish Midrash, and it is said that this is a story and a gift for anyone who is traveling from one place to the next. Today we celebrate the lives of these young adults who are traveling from one place in life to the next. And as we take a moment to look at their lives and celebrate all the good things that they have accomplished, we can see how each of them shines a light into this world. And so we say, surely there is a wonderful creator and caretaker of these young adults. I know God is taking care of our young adults right now. They're in a mix of emotions. I can't imagine how they feel. Feelings of excitement and celebration for all they have accomplished and come this far. For all the good people and lives that they have lived. 
They must also be feeling feelings of loss and sadness because they are not physically able to be with those friends and families and teachers who have walked along the journey with them thus far. As your church family, we want to say that we are here for you, that we realize all the feelings and things you must be going through. We are praying for you. We know that God is with you. And because we see God's light shining through each and every one of you, we give thanks and praise today. Thanks to God for your life and the light that you share with the world. We can't wait to see as you continue to shine, as you move from one place to the next. We now present and celebrate our First Baptist Church 2020 graduating high school seniors. Adeline Grace Bryant. Adeline graduated from Lakeview Academy and will attend the University of Georgia. Seth Cooper Carlton. Seth graduated from North Hall High School and will attend Reinhardt University. Walter John Carter Cooper. John Carter graduated from Lakeview Academy and will attend Georgia Southern University. Samuel Tucker Denton. Tucker graduated from Brookwood High School and will attend Kennesaw State University. Carly Grace Easterday. Carly graduated from Oasis in Cape Corral and will attend Florida Southwestern State College. Matthew Robert Jew. Matthew graduated from Lakeview Academy and plans to attend University of Georgia. Jackson W. Kemp. Jackson graduated from Cherokee Bluff High School and will attend Young Harris College. Carly Seymour Mancuso. Carly graduated from Chesity High School and plans to attend Georgia State University. Bentley Brooke Smallwood. Bentley graduated from North Hall High School and plans to attend Carson Newman University. Congratulations to our 2020 high school seniors. Please join me in a prayer of gratitude for our seniors. Our Father in heaven, with gratitude in our hearts, we give thanks today for these graduates who have meant so much to the life of this church, their families, schools, and community. We are richer for the talents, service, love and laughter they have brought us. We also give thanks for their families and teachers who have inspired these young people to reach their full potential. While this graduation season has been filled with challenges, it does not diminish the years of work that have brought us to this day. Lastly, we give thanks for all the blessings and hardships that shape us for the plan you have for our lives. So with grateful hearts for all that these students have meant to us, we ask your grace to cover these graduates as they move into the next chapter of their lives. God bless the class of 2020, amen. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned. But he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death but he was raised to life in the spirit. For our pastoral prayer today, I want us to continue to remember our medical professionals. There are 50 or more in our church family, and perhaps you know one of these, and as we pray today, would you just bring them to mind and find ways to encourage them as they go about what they do every day, treating those who are ill. We are saddened that in our own community, one of our own nurses died this past week as a result of the virus. We want to remember the family of Deb Stevers today, lift them up in our prayers and comfort them. Let's do what we can to encourage those who are on the front lines. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, often in the scriptures we read that you had great compassion on those who were ill. 
those who are suffering greatly. And in our own experiences, you have often provided that same comfort that we once needed. Your healing power teaches us your compassion and our frailty. Thank you for caring for us, both physically and emotionally. Today, we ask for your blessing on those who emulate you, our physicians and nurses who provide the ministry of healing. Guide and bless and encourage these faithful health care servants who willingly jeopardize their own health and safety during these perilous pandemic days. Please enable them as they assist in the healing process. We also remember today our first responders, those men and women who arrive just in time in the most difficult of circumstances, who patiently provide the skills and the assurance to those in distress. We remember today the caregivers in our assisted living facilities who patiently love and reassure those who are physically limited and mentally confused. We ask that you give these caregivers your strength in these most trying times. We remember those who are in the labs mixing the medicines that can be healing agents, producing the test results that can provide answers. We remember those who clean and disinfect our hospitals, our homes, those who keep us safe from the germs and viruses that can harm. May we also do our part with practicing safe hygiene and physical distance. Keep us safe, O oh Lord. Provide the wisdom we need to remain well. We pray for those who serve on our hospital boards, those administrators making critical decisions so that even more can be treated. We remember our hospital chaplains as they provide words of comfort, prayers of truth, and perhaps as they sit alone by the loved one of countless families, embolden them to persevere in their calling of care. Give them words of comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in our present circumstances, those circumstances that often lead to despair, May we all come together under the direction of your Holy Spirit to be encouragers, to be bright lights, to be faith-walking people, your people. Lead us to proclaim your good news to others. Teach us to love. Teach us to provide peace, to, pro to give forgiveness, and to pray the way that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Would you please join me in prayer? Good and faithful God, accept our offerings here today, not just our monies and our resources, but our very lives to your altar this morning. Help us to hear your voice today, your call to serve, your call to respond. Help us to hear your encouragement to endure for the work of the kingdom. Use our arms and hands and feet to be your comforting and strengthening presence to others. Grant that we may come to know more clearly the purpose of our labors, our learning, and our resources that will play in your divine plan to your greater glory. We make this offering joyfully in the name of Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oh. 
amazed in all of the mystery of his perfect ways. All I have need of is and will provide. He's always been faithful to me. I can't remember a trial or pain He did not recycle to bring me gain I can't remember one single regret in serving God Today's focus passage is John chapter 14, verses 15 through 24, if you'd like to follow along in your own Bible or device. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I don't know about you, but I've been paying attention to my breathing a little more the past two months, right? But it's not just the past two months that I've had to pay attention to my breathing. I was a speech geek in high school, and so I had to learn to breathe while I was giving speeches. You'd think it would be kind of intuitive, but I would get through a, a paragraph or a few sentences, and I would forget to breathe. And so some of the judges' feedback would be, you need to remember to breathe, if you want to do well in this speech competition. Of course, I don't have to tell any of our vocalists here tonight that breathing is very important to your singing, isn't it? 
I know you all were breathing well because you did a good job. And, 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 if, you, and if you weren't breathing well, it wouldn't have sounded so good. Uh, but I know that Mark has probably said on many occasions to the choir, remember to breathe, breathe here, take a breath here. It helps to increase your range and your ability to hit a pitch or to hold a note for a while. And you want to breathe in the right spot in the song so that the song flows correctly. You, you have to pay attention to your breathing when you're singing. Those are just a couple of instances of where we pay attention to our breathing. We also pay attention to our breathing sometimes when we're trying to go to sleep, don't we? Sometimes that's the exercise we're told to do if we want to fall asleep and we're having trouble. Pay attention to your breathing. You can count your breaths or you can time your breaths. And so you're paying attention to your breathing there. I became very aware of the air a few weeks ago. I had come down here to Georgia to record our worship service, kind of like we're doing right now, and drove back to Black Mountain, North Carolina. And the first things my daughter said to me when I got out of the car What's all that yellow stuff on the car? I said, oh yeah, that's the pollen in Georgia. We had forgotten about that since we lived in North Carolina. And all of a sudden I became aware of the air I was breathing in because I thought, oh my goodness, I'm breathing all that in. I know that a sore throat and a congestion is about to follow with all of this because I had been breathing in all that yellow pollen that was now on my car. And then of course there's COVID-19. We've been paying a lot of attention to our breathing and the air that we breathe the last couple of months. Every time you've gone to the grocery store, at least if you're like me, you've thought, what kind of air did I just breathe in? If you walk by somebody, you say, oh my goodness, I hope I didn't breathe in any air they just breathed out. We also pay attention to our breathing because we've been told that's one of the symptoms of COVID-19 if we're having trouble breathing. And so any time we have felt trouble breathing or if we've been nervous or felt anxiety and then we have our, our chest tightens up, we say, my goodness, did, is, is this it? Is, did I catch it? We've been paying attention to our breath and our breathing and the air around us so much the past couple of months this respiratory pandemic has almost forced us to consider the sacredness of breathing, hasn't it? The air we breathe around us. It's a wonder that something so vital to our lives, our, our breathing, that is so present with us every second of the day, we remain so inattentive to throughout most of our lives. It's an involuntary action and yet when we focus on it, when we focus on our breathing, whether for, for singing or for public speaking or for sleeping, we become enhanced in our abilities, in our speech, in our creativity, in the ways that we can rest and in our general health when we pay attention to the air we breathe and our breathing. Well, in the Old and New Testament, there is little distinction between breath and and spirit, or wind and spirit. In the ancient days, there was something so similar in the air that we breathe and the presence of God's spirit. In fact, the Greek words, the Hebrew words, have quite a bit of overlap there. You almost have to, to, to determine whether to translate a word as spirit or breath or wind simply based on the context and not the word itself. And I wonder if that's a signal to us that not only is God as present as the air around us, but the very act of breathing is a testimony to Christ's ongoing work in our own personal lives and in the church. Every breath we take is an opportunity to fulfill the work that Christ began in the disciples 2,000 years ago. Our scripture picks up in a discourse just prior to Jesus' passion. So you can imagine this discourse occurring on the days leading up to his betrayal and his arrest, the trial and the crucifixion, where he tells his disciples to be prepared for his leaving. The disciples probably didn't know exactly what Jesus was talking about, but he was giving them comfort, saying, I will not be physically present with you in the near future. 
And wouldn't you know it, buried deep in the book of John, there's Jesus talking about physical distancing. Haven't we heard enough already about physical distancing? And here's Jesus saying, I'm going to be physically distant from you in the book of John. Well, Jesus comforts his disciples knowing that they would need assurance and comfort, not just in the days ahead when Jesus would carry that cross and go to the hill of Calvary, but they would need comfort and assurance when Jesus ascended to heaven, that glorious day when Jesus ascends to the right hand of the Father. The disciples would need some assurance that Jesus would still be there with them, even if not physically in the way he was at that moment. Strangely enough, these words of comfort begin with a challenge, a challenge rooted in love. If you love me, you will keep my commands. Loving God means following the way of Christ. So John's words of comfort, or Jesus' words of comfort in the book of John, are bookended by these commands to love God and ultimately to love one another, which is no coincidence. Jesus also promises a paraclete to be with them forever and a spirit of truth. My Bible and your Bible likely doesn't say paraclete. It probably says something like an advocate or a companion or a counselor. And we'll come back to that in just a few moments. But the paraclete and the Holy Spirit would be present with the disciples always even if invisible, and it's not something they would have to go out and search for. The Spirit of Christ would find them and would pursue them and would be with them. Jesus assured the disciples that when it was time for him to leave, he wouldn't really leave. A spirit of truth would be present at all times, as present as the breath the wind and the air all around them at any given moment of the day. The sermon series we find ourselves in now is called Still Emmanuel. God is still with us. Jesus speaks this truth to the disciples in the passage who would soon wonder if that would be the case. When Jesus went into the tomb, the disciples asked, is God still with us? When Jesus would ascend to the Father, the disciples might ask, is God still with us? Like the disciples, we've heard that God will not leave us nor forsake us. God remains present with us even in a time when we have to be physically distant. But we've learned another important truth, and that is that God with us means that the kingdom of God is being instilled in and around us. You see, part of knowing Jesus is still with us and part of acknowledging that Jesus is as present as the air we breathe is making sure that our lives are marked by the compassion of Christ. If Jesus is truly in us and in our souls and with us every second, then shouldn't we follow his commands, as Jesus says in the passage? Jesus implies there is an inseparable link between being aware of the Spirit's abiding presence and keeping the commands of Christ. Commands like, follow me. Commands like, love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemy. Forgive, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Repent, deny yourself and take up your cross. Baptize, make disciples, so on and so on. The commands of Christ that would be kept because we are aware that God is present with us and that God is as real as the air we breathe. Our every word and our every action is a testimony to Emmanuel, God with us. Earlier we mentioned a Greek word called paraclete. Paraclete is a word that implies a divine and close personal presence, a spiritual presence. And so whether your Bible says advocate or counselor or companion, the point is is that God is always there and ever present when we feel alone or when we feel abandoned. 
And I can't think of a more important send-off message from the Scripture for our seniors on this graduate Sunday, especially in a time like this. In a time when you have been forced to be physically distant from each other in your senior year of all years. And that makes it doubly scary, I suppose, for the days ahead. When I graduated, I'm not going to lie, I was not exactly ready to take the bull by the horns, so to say. I was not voted most likely to succeed. I was not voted most athletic. I was not voted most talented. I was voted most shy. I knew I was going to need some help in the days ahead. And when I went to Georgetown College, I knew I would need some help. I would need some kind of advocate or counselor or companion in both the spiritual and literal sense. As I got closer to moving off to college, I was wondering, how am I going to make it? How am I going to do this? Moving out of my home, moving away from the city I've been raised in, even if it was only 45 minutes away. How am I going to do this? Who will be there for me? But the paraclete, the advocate, the counselor, the companion, the helper was always there. Even when I felt like I was going out on my own, the Spirit was there with me. I think I experienced God's presence through campus ministry programs and the students who were involved with that, campus ministers who helped me discern not just things about my Christian life, but also my call to ministry, religion professors who helped me sort through questions about the Bible, and the local church near the college that kept me connected to a body of believers. Through those involvements, I was able to sense God's presence even when I went far away from home came to realize the, Lord's, the Lord remained present with me, even with such a monumental change as graduating from high school. And it is a monumental change, one of the biggest changes of your life. But it was up to me to stop and to focus on the presence of God that surrounded me. Yes, the Spirit followed me wherever I went, but I think Jesus asks us to stop and remember that the Spirit is with us. We are to stop and to focus on God's presence in our lives and not just hope that things will get better. It's up to us to focus on the fact that Jesus walks with us and then to determine what we will do with our lives. So whether you are a graduate or you are discerning the next phase of life, or if you're just trying to discern the next week, amen, that's me by the way, the Holy Father, Son, and Spirit are present with you at every breath. Not every time you get out of bed or go to bed, but every breath. Every breath, the Advocate is with you. When the breathing is easy and when the breathing is difficult, the Advocate is there. When the breathing is short or the breathing is long and drawn out, the companion is by your side. When the breathing is smooth or when it is rough or obstructed, the counselor is there. There is an advocate, a companion, and a counselor, and a helper with you. But you must take the time to stop and to focus on your breathing, on God's presence in your life. The ancient name for God was unpronounceable. It couldn't be spoken. I'm guessing that's something you've probably learned in your Sunday school class. It was unpronounceable because it was too holy on one regard. But it was also potentially unpronounceable because it was a string of certain letters and consonants strung together. Yod, hey, wah, hey was how it was spelled in the Hebrew Scripture. Translated to English, we say Yahweh. You've heard that before, Yahweh as the name of God. I am what I am, or I will be what I will be, is about the best we can do in translating that phrase. But countless Jewish and Christian scholars have pointed out something very fascinating about this name of God. yod Hey wah Hey is the sound of our breathing when pronounced as consonants. Yoh. So every time 
you take a breath, you can remember that God is with you. For the very name of God is pronounced. Like you're breathing. Yahweh. With every breath, you are proclaiming the presence of the great I am in your life. Graduates who are watching or listening, remain aware that the presence of Jesus is never ending. It is constant. It is never failing. With every breath, know that the Spirit of Christ is with you, beside you every step of the way as you proclaim the name of God with every breath. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your never-ending presence in our lives. We thank you for Christ's assurance that we would not be alone even when we feel alone or abandoned, that you have sent your spirit of truth to be with us, and for that we celebrate. I pray that as these graduates go forward in their lives, whatever that entails, whether it's work or college or trade school, perhaps some more time to figure out what their life is going to entail and listening to your call on their lives, that they would be very aware that with every breath, you are there with them. That they don't have to figure all of this out on their own, that there is an advocate and a counselor and a companion to guide their steps, just as Jesus walked with the disciples. Jesus, continue to walk with us this day and in the days ahead. Amen. For our hymn of commitment today, we're going to do something a little different. I've asked Patton and Brooke and Michelle to sing with me an anthem called With All Your Heart. It's based on Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I had actually picked this out last fall and ordered it for our choir and our orchestra to present it on this day uh, as a song of dedication to our seniors. Um, I want to do it even with the quartet because it's a good word to remind us all as we take every breath, as we remember the spirit of truth is with us, that we trust in him. We acknowledge him knowing that he will direct our paths. He will let us know the path we should go in even when we don't understand.
to close this service, we want to let you know that God's invitation is always open. And though you can't make a decision in this room today, you are certainly welcome to follow God's call on your life wherever that is leading you. If that means that you'd like to become a Christian, to become a follower of Jesus Christ, if you'd like to unite with this church, First Baptist Church of Gainesville, or if you'd like to answer a call that God has placed on your life into some kind of service or ministry, we encourage you to contact the office to speak with one of our ministerial staff. We'd love to hear about that decision, and we encourage you not to wait to go ahead and make that decision now, even though we can't be physically together. We believe that God is speaking to all of us, and so if you have felt God's leading, we encourage you to let the church know and to share your decision with us. We want to thank you for worshiping at First Baptist Church of Gainesville today. We will now close our service with a, a song, a benediction of song, and then we will be dismissed. Mm -hmm.